Professor Stephen Hawking was a genius of our generation that almost spent his entire life studying black holes. Let me show you how you can throw them at people with this really strong build. The build goes like this. Hunterfoot with the third spell, first passive. Mercenary Jacket, third spell, first passive. Don't worry, I'm gonna be explaining the spells in a second. Soldier Boots or any Plate Boots, second spell, second passive. You wanna have a Mist Caller as an offhand or a Torch as a cheap alternative that might actually work better in certain situations. You wanna have an Arcane Staff with those spells right here, first Q, first W, and first passive. And you wanna have a Deadfoot Cape with Pork Omelette and Major Healing Potions. I wouldn't go lower than Major Healing Potions with 5.1. I wouldn't go lower than 5.1 Resistance Potions. There's some flexibility with the offhand. For example, you could absolutely go with the Muisa. That might actually be even better in a lot of situations, but that's gonna up the price of this build by quite a lot. I like this because of the lower cooldowns. At the same time, I'm in the minority when it comes to this. A lot of people are actually using the Muisa as an offhand, and I'm gonna explain why in a second. Greetings, my fellow viewers. Fret not, for I am Mogdan's trust hat and I come bearing good news! If you enjoy watching my master's content on YouTube, then you will be pleased to know that it's all recorded live on Twitch. By joining us on Twitch, you'll not only get a sneak peek of upcoming videos, but also have the opportunity to win giveaways and drops and just hang out with a lively and amazing community. So come on over and join us now. We're most likely live at this very moment. Click the link in the description down below or in the pinned comment to join us. Let's go through each ability and tell you what it does briefly. This this ability looks like this, this is the Q ability, it jumps between enemies, it can hit a, a maximum amount of 3 targets, it deals the highest amount of damage to the first target and it deals 38 damage to the rest, so 203 for the first hit, 3, 38 and 38 for the last 2 hits. The thing that's important when it comes to this is the fact that upon attacking an enemy, whatever enemy will have this weird purple thing, purple glow around them. This purple glow can be consumed by using an auto attack. That auto attack will do more damage to an enemy that has that purple glow. And upon doing the damage, the purple glow gets removed. That's called an arcane charge. Furthermore, because of this passive, every single time you use an ability, don't get me wrong, you can use whatever ability, even this for example. You will get a buff and you will be able to auto attack faster than normal. Compare this, the normal attack speed that I have right now, with this right here. It's much, much fast. Much, much, much fast. So that's something that you do need to keep in mind. And then you have this W. This W looks like this. And if you hit somebody with the blade that, by the way, does, uh, does damage, you will have the second stage. Basically, you have the Enigma blade that you've seen over there that, that does primarily damage in a big cone in front of you. And then you have the teleport ability, the flicker, that allows you to teleport and become immune for 0.2 seconds. You're immune to damage. It's very hard to actually hit that iframe. It's basically in the moment in which you are in between the point in which you've activated this and the point of your destination. It's very hard to hit, but if you hit it, know that you can iframe stuff like Curse Staff E or uh, certain things like that. I usually use this to iframe the traps because that's actually easy to, to do. Then you have your E. The primary use of your E, besides doing damage, which is not really the biggest deal because it's just 100 something damage. I mean, technically 200, but 100 after resistances and stuff. But the primary use is actually not that. The primary use is to purge all enemy buffs. This is huge. Uh, it, it's very good. It also silences them, but again, that's not the primary reason you want to use this. You want to use this to purge your enemies. So stuff like mercenary jackets, stuff like cleric robes, you can absolutely purge this. Another thing that can be used is actually the silence. Not as important as the purge, but the silence can actually be used to interrupt people. So if you're fighting somebody with coltis robe or a fire staff with fire artillery or something that's susceptible to interrupts, you can interrupt them by using this. Now, the fire staff, which is the example that I gave, it's one of the toughest matches that you will face. Because if they have both artillery and coltis robe, you will have to interrupt both of them, but you can only interrupt one. That makes it very, very, very tough. The mercenary jacket makes it so for up to seven hits you can heal. You heal every single time you deal damage for up to 7 hits. Now, a very good idea is to actually pair this with this passive right here. That again, you can activate by doing whatever. So if you manage to pair that with a Q and a bunch of auto attacks, that's going to consume those 7 attacks faster than you can say goodbye to your enemy that's dying right before you. Then you have your helmet slot ability, which reflects 85% of the damage and increases your resistance, and your F, which makes you move fast and heals you over time. Now let's talk a little bit about some swaps. So why would you wanna replace this with a torch? 
The main reason would be the price. The torch would be much cheaper than this. At the same time, this is 9k, so it's not the biggest deal. One thing that the torch does actually better than this is the fact that the torch, as you can see right here, also improves your attack speed bonus. Yes, you're going to have more cooldowns than with this. This has an 11% buff. This has a 6.1% buff. But this also boosts your attack speed, which means that will make this build into a machine gun-like build. Now, the best offense that you can possibly have would be the Muisak. The thing with the Muisak and the thing that makes the Muisak great, if I can even... Okay, I didn't know it was actually here. The thing that makes the Muisak great is the fact that it boosts your healing cast bonus. Meaning that you're gonna heal for more whenever you're using Mercenary Jacket. In the last fight that I'm going to be showing right now against the fire staff, you will see how that could have actually saved my life. So uh, yeah, if you can afford paying a little bit more, because it's much more expensive compared to this and it's going to raise up the price of this build by quite a lot, I would strongly suggest you go with this. Another alternative, if you want to go like really sweaty, you could try the taproot. You could absolutely try the taproot, though if you try that, I would recommend you switch to Assassin Jacket and the second ability. So that's basically creating a whole different build in itself. But yeah, I would say you just go with this build, which uh, costs me about 200k with all the consumables and everything, and it's just great. As you shall see in a second. Normal bow. He's a normie. Okay, I just need to make sure that I purge. Okay, let me explain the fight actually. So... He has the wrong Q over there, he has Mercenary Jacket. I only want to punch his Mercenary Jacket. Hunter Hood. I'm not going to attack through the Hunter Hood. This, I need to make sure that I don't get pinpointed. He knows he's going to be able to do that. So I need to try to hit my second stage of the W over there. Fourth of all, I don't need to punch this. Uh, he has this to kite me from a range. Kiting me from a range would mess up his E. He also has a normal cape, which is going to mess up his DPS big, big, big time. Okay, so I just need to have something ready for his mercenary jacket. I got the first hit, which is actually huge. Reflect this. Absolutely, full reflect, heal up. I could also push that, but it's not worth it in general. It's actually not worth it. Beautiful dodges, beautiful dodges. Let me try to be very aggressive here. I mean, tank through this, tank through this. Why am I missing stuff? Boom! Beautiful counter! He knew that I would purge his, uh, his R, and I don't know if you guys noticed what he did over there. Knowing that I would purge his R, he didn't, I mean his jacket, mercenary jacket, that's what I'm talking about. He tried to heal up by using mobs. That's a smart thing. That's a smart thing. That's why I wanted to be very aggressive about that. How did that Q not hit actually? Mobs. Yeah, that's what he's doing. Chill! Alright. Ah, uh, let's wait a little bit, actually. Now nah, let's wait a little bit. Hunter writing is the best. Yeah, that's true. But I guess we don't really need to wait. I am playing Arcane at the end of the day. Arcane no waits. Arcane kills. Ask t -Bench. Arcane no waits. Elden, I'm sorry about that. It was horrible fighting you. Okay, he does not see Reflex. Okay, I guess this this I guess the tables have turned and now I'm fighting the low infamy players because this guy is not reacting to anything I'm doing. Like I guess right now I guess right now I've, I was fighting the low infamy player. 
Okay, boys, let me explain this matchup a little bit. I forgot to do that. So, he's gonna stack this up, as you can see right there. He's gonna Shadow Wish towards me and use this. I need to either or react to this to his shadow edge which is going to be very hard to do and prevent that or purge his stacks i'm going to go for the ladder and purge his stacks uh furthermore he has this right here that's not a problem i just need to make sure to not attack through it uh, the stacks are the only thing that i need to purge actually he's gonna lose his stacks in five ticks he lost them let's go there He really missed. He really messed that up. He doesn't know he cannot go invisible while using that. Actually, nice, bro. Did you guys see that? Ah, I did not hit him. Full HP gang. I can do that again. Same exact thing. I mean, if he didn't miss, that would have been just as beautiful, but he did miss. So that's that's on him. That's on him. How did that not hit? Okay, he's going to be desperate. Okay, <laughs> I knew he was about to be desperate, and that's why I wanted to pop this. Let's go. Horror Deaths, let's go. Watch us play live on twitch.tv slash Mogdan. We decided to finally launch Patreon after seeing so many people willing to help us out. So if you want to help us out, if you want to support our content, please consider joining our Patreons by accessing the link in the description down below. It truly helps us out a lot and we really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. We love you all.